grief the snow is deep it's going over my, my boots Welcome back friends. Today we're going to be doing a wood stove video. Mrs. W was putting some wood in the stove the other day and she said this fell out of somewhere from the inside. I don't know, didn't know exactly what it was and I looked inside and it became you know, obvious what it was uh, and it was a, a damaged baffle. So I got the replacement part. Interesting thing about this, so I called Hearthstone. So our wood stove is a, is a soapstone wood stove. I'll talk about why we chose that and why I think that that's really, uh, well, that's been my favorite wood stove I've ever had. Uh, but I, when I called Hearthstone about this, they explained it to me and their factory part was $140. And I thought that was an awful lot for a baffle. So I did, did a quick search on, in Amazon and you can buy the same thing for, I think it was $54. So that's what I got was the Amazon part. So let's uh, take a look at it. We'll put it in. Uh, these are common uh, with uh, some of the newer stoves. So Replacing this, would, it would give you the ability, at least the understanding, to fix your own if this happened. And then um, we'll also share Mrs. W's secret potpourri recipe, what she puts in our little pot on the wood stove that makes the house smell so good. So let's get, uh, let's open this up and take a look and see if we can do a little quick R&R. &R. I let the wood stove cool down and I am a little ashamed here. I should have cleaned that ash out a long time ago. It's been so cold that we heat with our wood stove. That's our primary heat and it runs 24 hours a day and I just haven't, well, I haven't really wanted to, <laughs> to take it offline to, uh, to, deal, to clean it out and I should have, but I'll, we'll clean it out today. So if you look inside there, you're gonna see, can you see? I'm hoping you can see. Right here is the baffle, right there. And see how it's all broken right there? So yeah, I think this piece will even come out right here. Let's see if I can get that piece out. Oh, there we go. Uh, so that uh, has, the stove has not worked properly since that fell in and Mrs. W brought it to me. What caused that uh, was uh, trying to overstuff, trying to put too much in there. And all three of us are guilty of that. You know, at nighttime, you want to get as much firewood in there as possible. And it ends up, uh, it breaks that baffle. So we'll have to be careful with that. So let's clean out all of the, the ash. We take the ash and we put it around our fruit trees. They seem to like that. And then we'll uh, see if we, the new piece will go in. There has been a lot of fires uh, from folks that have cleaned out their fire boxes or wood stoves uh, and put the ashes into a plastic bucket because, you know, you put your hand in there when you feel these ashes and they're, they're, they don't feel hot, but underneath there, ash is a tremendous insulator. That's the reason why those guys can walk barefoot on the hot coals is because they spread a very thin layer of ash over top of the coals that insulates them from the heat. It's nothing supernatural going on there. It's just uh, it's just the ash is a wonderful insulator. So what happens is folks will think it's all cool and they'll go grab a five gallon bucket, like a plastic bucket, uh, put the ashes in it and go sit it outside, maybe on the deck or even inside sometimes, and then go to sleep and hours later that will burn and melt through that plastic bucket um, and catch fire. So if you have uh, one of the, you need three fire tools for a wood stove. You need a good shovel like this, a good poker, um, and a, some sort of a metal bucket where you can put the, uh, the ashes in, where if they do, if there are cinders in there, it's not going to melt through it and, uh, and destroy it. Boy, I should have cleaned this out a long time ago. I just didn't realize it was so full. Good grief, the snow is deep. It's going over my, my boots. This is the closest fruit tree I have. I'll just dump it on the snow as it will, uh, the snow will melt here soon. It'll eventually find its way down among the roots. We have really enjoyed this wood stove. Uh, I think one of the best features of it, apart from the obvious, which is the excellent heat from the soapstone, uh, is having uh, the two doors on it. I don't use the front door here other than uh, for just cleaning. We put the wood in the side and our other stoves loaded from the front. What we found is, you know, when you try to get too much in there and you're dealing with round logs, several times we'd open the door and, and cinders and hot things would fall out on the floor. And uh, that wasn't I less than ideal. So what's nice about the side is you can put long pieces in there and that you load them from the side and there's, it's impossible for them to roll out uh, onto your floor and damage your floor or start a fire. So it's, uh, it's definitely my favorite way to load a stove. I'd kind of forgotten that there is a, there's a cleaning tray in here as well. Uh, completely forgot about that. 
I don't even remember what that was all about. Oh, I remember. There's a grate. Okay, yeah, there's a grate in here. And then you hooked this little hook deal. And it's supposed to kind of filter, move back and forth and filter that out of there. But it's, it was always kind of seemed phony to me. Okay, so now that I've, so now that I've got this uh, cleaned out, uh, I want to test for heat because I'm going to take the little shop vac. Make sure you use a shop vac that's got a, a filtration, you know, a filter in there. But you, uh, test for heat because uh, that'll destroy your shop vac. It'll catch out on fire. So when you're testing for heat with something, use the back of your hand always. We learned that in wildland firefighting. If you burn your fingers where you need to grasp and, and to work, uh, you're in bad shape. You can't do anything. If you do get into something hot with the back of your hand, there's definitely less feelers, less nerve endings, I think, in there. Uh, and if you do get a little burn on there, it's not going to prevent you from using your hands. So always use the back of your hands, go through, make sure, touch everything, and that it's cool enough, and we can go get our shot back. With everything cleaned out, we should be able to remove the old baffle. Uh, you don't need anything special tool-wise, uh, just a Leatherman um, or a pair of pliers or nippers or something. There's two wires that run through these heat tubes um, that just hold it into place. So the new one came with its own wires. So let's see if we can, we can uh, smash those and push those out. Now we're supposed to be able to just lift this out, but that's, uh, it's so broken up that... Oh, that is in bad shape. There is not much left of that old one. It's, uh, well, it's almost, it's very lightweight. I thought it would be thicker than that. And this is the stainless steel top. So this is how the new one came. Looks like it has all the replacement parts. So it's got the new deal and then the wires instead of cotter pins to go around there. Thanks a lot for putting that cheap tape on that sticks on there and I have to clean all the sticky off now. There's a special, should be a special punishment for manufacturers who put stickers or decals on things that leave a sticky residue. The guy from Hearthstone said that I should just, it should just go right up in here between the tubes straight up and kind of drop into position here. Those wires around and then that that little uh, thinner portion of it there mounts on that front that front tube that feels yeah, that dropped into place nicely right there. So here you can see that new baffle installed. Just sits up there with the wire ties. Um, now I can, it's clearly clear to see how that would have got broken when you're tr we're trying to stuff logs up there and jostling it and back and forth, you know, over a year, you know, every day after day, that's gonna happen. So we'll be more careful and make sure we don't, don't do anything that will touch that. But I'm glad it was such an easy fix. Now that is a lot better. All right, let's start a fire up here. It's nice of them. They even sent us a cardboard fire starter there. How about that? Yeah, are you going to help me? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so we'll... <laughs> the reality of home vlogging is that Sometimes you have a little person who's a little fussy in your arms. Can you hear her? <laughs> the current problem is, is she doesn't want to let go of the icicle, but her hands are getting cold. <laughs> and we have barking dogs. That, that kind of a day. But anyways. <laughs> so, so the reality of the... Re <laughs> hey, 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 Jack. 
Can you help me? Thank you. That's how I do it. <laughs> oh, look. We got it. We got it. What is that? What is that, sweet loaf? What is that? Cuckoo. Cuckoo, that's right. Can you say clock? We put this, it's a soapstone container, on top of our wood stove and it heats water up so to make sure that the air is not quite as dry as it could be. So I'm gonna show you what I do all of the time. There's two different methods. So if we are really good about it and we make sure that we don't forget to add water, we will put orange peels and cinnamon sticks in because it smells wonderful. Sometimes we forget to put it in when we're busy. <laughs> and then I just add essential oil. It's a cheat. <laughs> and today, as you can tell, I might need to just add some essential oil because we do need to refill it probably about every 18 hours or so. And so sometimes it doesn't happen as frequently as it should. So I told everyone we'd speak a little bit about uh, why we like the soapstone wood stove. Mm -hmm. our, we've had a fireplace in our first, first house, two fire, fireplaces, was it? Fireplace in the first house, fireplace, fireplace in the second house. Steel stove, cast iron stove, and then we ultimately have settled with the, the soapstone stove from Vermont. And this one is our favorite. Would you buy this again? I would definitely buy this again. It is warm. It heats up nicely. It keeps the heat throughout the night so, night so it radiates. And the house doesn't cool down as much because there's constantly heat being produced from the soapstone because it saves that heat and then lets it go. So it's a very nice, warm heat. It's a warmer heat. It's not the hot, cold heat of the cast iron. Is it cast iron? Yeah. Yeah, the cast iron. The, uh, the thing I've really noticed with it is um, it radiates the heat. Soapstone is really an incredible material because it, it, it stores heat and kind of it has a time release effect to it. Exactly. Uh, I've had, we, the stove will usually hold about eight hours or so. If we, that's burning fur. I think if you burned a hardwood, it would last longer. Yeah. But we'll put um, we'll we'll put wood in, fill it up before we go to bed at um, nine o'clock or so, and we'll start the fire at you know five or six. Sometimes there's not a fire in the box, but it's you can feel it radiating heat, right. even though it's been empty and the fire has been out for some time. So it's really amazing that way, and it's also different where you don't get that like it's melting your face off like cast iron, right. like super super hot. It, it feels like you you almost can't tell where the heat's coming from. It just it has this warm glow about it. It's much more pleasant, especially like where we sit close to it in the dining room. Yeah. You never feel like it's going to burn your face off. Right. And I also feel it's safer, perhaps for children. I mean, they would definitely get burned if they touched it, but not the same intensity of a burn and as quick a burn as it would with a cast iron. That's true. That cast iron gets so hot. If you were to, a kid were to fall on it, for example, I mean, I, it would, the skin yeah. and everything would stay right on there. Where this, I'm not saying that you can touch, touch it, but you can... You could do this at pretty much any time and it's not going, it's not as severe, it's not as extreme. Right. The only thing I would want a cast iron for is if you had a weekend house or you weren't using it regularly, this takes a while to heat up where the cast iron, if you, you know, if you're coming in on a Friday and you want to heat the house up quickly, that cast iron pumps up that heat out really, really fast. So that would be the one time yeah. I would, I would want it. A, that is kind of a down, a, a downside. It doesn't, it hasn't been a problem for us because we're at home all the time. So the fire is, is burning 24 hours a day. So we, it's, it's just, it's a fixture. Right. Uh, a woods, I like how um, the guy we bought it from, Buck, said the, the, a wood stove is the, is, is the heart of the home. Yeah. I, and I feel that way. When you come down and you come in the home and, and the wood stove is warm and you can stand next to it, especially if you've been out and it's been cold, it just has a, it just feels like home. It feels comfortable. Where if we're gone for a long time, we come in and the house is cold and the stove is cold, it just doesn't feel the same. Right. Well, and also if we didn't have it, we like to look at the fire. So I, I can't imagine not having a glass front. Yeah. Because there's something yeah. very intimate and cozy and warm about that glass front, which we love. Yeah. Uh, and I, we, should we also admit the other thing we have? We have some electric heaters. Well, yeah. Well, we have, you so, have to. Right. So in case, you know, you are gone, it keeps a minimum. So it turns on once it hits, what, 50 degrees? Yeah. So we can... Yeah, if we were gone, to be gone for an extended period of time and, and the heaters will come on and keep the house from freezing. Uh, but we don't use them. We used them this morning when we were letting the stove cool down. Yeah. Uh, and yesterday we hit four degrees yeah. in the morning. And so when we were at four degrees, 
and we d didn't have any wood all night long because we slept all night long. Yeah. We did come through. Yeah. Out and but pump it's, been a, it's been a really, really great stove. I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider anything other than a soapstone after this. Yeah. The downside is it's a little bit slower to heat up. Mm -hmm. um, they're a little bit expensive, uh, maybe a little bit more expensive. I don't know. Maybe. But we use less wood. Well, we use, yeah, way less wood. Way less wood. Way less wood. Like then, a fourth of the amount, maybe? I'd say uh, half. At least half. Okay. Half. But the main thing was is the cast iron would burn so quickly that it would, uh, we were starting fires all the time. Yeah. So yeah, it's been, it's been really, really great. So yeah. So what's for dinner tonight? I you have book anything? club. Oh yeah, book clubs. I know what's for dinner then. Yeah, you. so you're on your own with the kids. Steaks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I thought I'd share that with you. I'm glad to get the stove going. I didn't tell you, but it's all good now. So you can, you can go to town with it. Good. Yeah. I will. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video. I don't know. I thought, the, I don't know what, I, I give up, gave up uh, trying to figure out what the weather is going to do. It's been so strange. I think it's the global warming. I don't think it's global warming. I think it's, Weather manipulation. Mm. So, I don't know if it does it or not. It does. It's just super stiff. Oh. I suppose that's good. It makes it hard for the child to do it, even if they fall on it, huh? That thing's almost break before it does. Okay. All right. It is amazing that we, do you think it's, we're ever going to need to, well, I guess maybe in a year or something, we might have to attach it to the wall, but we don't today. No, I think she's, she's such a clever little sausage. She'll, she'll learn it very quickly. Okay. Bye again. Oh, I didn't know you were videotaping. <laughs> <laughs> Cody. This goes to show that we've got nothing to hide. <laughs>